Welcome, ladies, to the Real Estate Investor Show, providing inspiration, strategies, and insight to empower women investors to live balanced and financially free lives. Now, here are your co-hosts, Liz and Andressa. Welcome back, ladies. This is Liz. This is Andressa. Welcome back to the Real Estate Investor Show where we're on a mission to empower women to live a financially free and balanced life. And mm-hmm. we do that week in and week out, right, Andressa? Yep. And we are back with the mini sode. Andressa, what are we talking about for this mini sode? We're talking about balance. And I know this is a trigger word for a lot of people. And many of them might say balance is a lie. And I agree. And I'll explain with I'll explain during this mini sode what we are talking about. All right, Liz. So here's the thing balance like we stand right that's our mission to empower women to live a financially free and balanced life but i gotta i gotta say to people balanced life is a lie Uh uh-oh we have been lying to people Uh we gotta take it do we have to take it out of our mission statement cross that out (laughs) but here's here's what i believe is a lie when we think about balance we think about equal parts Mm. equal parts of time that we spend in our business in our lives and that's a pure lie it's not even possible but that's not what we are standing for here whatever balance means to you so to me I want to have an unbalanced life as much as I want and I might pivot it might change depending on the quote-unquote the season that I am in right so if I want to spend 80% 80% of my time in 2023 traveling, is that unbalanced? Or this is my type of balance, right? If I want to learn about real estate, investing in real estate, but I also have intention to learn, I don't know, crochet, ballet, or martial arts. I want to spend more time with my family. I want to travel, to do charity events, to do missions across uh, the world. Whatever that is, will cause an imbalance if you're putting on like equal parts, right? So when we think about balance, I want you guys to think about what does it mean to you? What does it look like to you, for you, for your family? What it was 10 years ago, it's not what it is right now, 100%. It really isn't. So spending time to really think about it and put something in place, right? So I'm going to share a couple of things with you. The number one thing that I would say is stop looking at your to-do list and start evaluating your thinking list, Ooh. all the items that the thinking you, list. Yeah, it's your thinking list. I like that. All the items that you're in it and you're thinking about it, you have to plan it, you need to give a uh, lists for people to execute this is where your time is going sometimes we focus too much on our to-do list and we stop evaluating our thinking list and once you start firing yourself from your thinking list that's when you find more balance in your life Hmm. so that's that's the number one thing that i would say the second thing i think is awareness right how do we know we are out of balance and I'll share something uh, w- with you. As, as Liz and I are growing our business, anybody that is growing a business is feeling some sort of pain, right? Is with the team, with the, the portfolio, you can, you can name it. So you have different types of problems and you need different types of mentors to really bring awareness to the areas that you are not up to. So having that awareness about, okay, how my body's reacting to this situation Mm. and something that happened this week that I want to share with you guys, nothing complicated is actually quite the opposite. I was feeling very, very frustrated and I had a meeting with Liz at 1 PM and it was like 1230 and I was frustrated. Something triggered my frustration But I was like, why am I so frustrated about this? And then I I stopped a little bit and I was like, well, hold on a second. I did not eat Mm. lunch yet. So I called Liz and I said, listen, can we push the, the meeting half an hour so I can eat? So 
being aware of your body and your mind uh, to a level that you go back to the basics, right? Maslow theory. Do you have your basics covered? Did you eat well? Did you sleep? Are you hydrated? Those are like the basic, basic topics that you should be aware of when you are out of balance. And, and then, you know, you regroup. That will be my, my other item. One thing yeah. that I would say, Liz, is that right now with the economy the way that it is, a lot of people are suffering and they're having this anxiety inside them because they're not moving to the speed that they were moving before. Yeah. So we are yeah. all addicted to a quick, 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 you know, speed, go, 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 go. And this time it's requiring us to really stay still mm. and pull the trigger only when it's the numbers make sense instead of you know, doing the same thing that we did before because we, the market shift, we need to shift it too. So a lot of people are feeling this anxiety and I want you guys to be aware of it, the awareness, the awareness, aware of it, that that's what you're feeling, but you're tying your worth and success to the quantity of things that you are doing. Mm -hmm. So I just want to bring it to your attention. And Liz, you want to share the carrot? The carrot story. You like that, don't you? Yes. <laughs> do you like carrots, by the way? Just complete sidebar. Do you like carrots? All right, people. I don't know where this is. She's going with that, but that's okay. Uh, you know what? I do like those carrots that have different colors and they're okay. like, Just, you know, in the pan. What's well, important know? for them to know if you like carrots. So here's a story really <laughs> quick. It's really, a really quick story. I'm reading a book. Uh, it, it's very, very helpful around going further deeper into the um, law of attraction. And one of the stories that the, the person, the author talks about uh, is basically saying, how long does it take for a carrot to become from a seed to uh, become an actual uh, carrot or a, a vegetable? And it's and, and, and basically 70 days it takes from seed to carrot. Seven and zero. Seven zero. And, and the whole point of that, right, is, is the law of gestation. Because what, what's so powerful when we're growing and cultivating things in, the, in a garden is that we we tend to it, we 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 water it, um, we take the weeds out. Um, no one goes over it and says, "Come on, it's thirty days, let's go." You know, no one pushes seeds to grow faster than they should, but we do that in our businesses all the time, right? So mm -hmm. that was the that was the metaphor there. I like that, and you know, we need, we need to start reevaluating how we're doing things now. What took you here will not take you there, so we need to start reevaluating things. One more tip here, set boundaries. Boundaries are not for other people. Boundaries are for ourselves. However, we don't take the time to really sit down and say what's working, what's not working with our spouse, with our partners. We only do that like majority of people that I know do that only at the end of the year. And I encourage you to do this in a monthly basis. What's working, what's not working. And one thing, one step further that I would say is like, when it's like a breakdown on, on a specific topic that it's not working, you've got to understand the root cause of it. And the way that you do that, you really like spell out what is the issue. And then you go under your, your, seven layers of whys. Why yep. is that happening? Why, 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 why? Until you really get to the cause uh, yep. of it. Unless you get to the cause of it, it's going to come back and repeat. But it's going to come back in different forms, in different ways. And then if you are not aware of it, you're just going to get frustrated with the amount of things that are, are happening. So the, the awareness of the boundaries so is like, this works for me. This does not work for me. And I encourage I got, you. And I got a great example of that, Joseph, mm. if you don't mind. Okay. And this, is the, this is a really interesting, I haven't told you this. So you're, oh, you're hearing it for the first time now. You're, so it's a lead, it's a lead, it's a lead in or a lead up or, or, or kind of came after what you just shared earlier. Remember earlier in the week, the example you just shared, hey, I'm feeling you know, uh, unbalanced and, and, yes. and the fact that you needed time, you then messaged me, Hey, can we push a half hour? No problem. Yes. And that's my, you know, I want to be accommodating and what have you now, 
The other part of that story, and this is where boundaries come in. This is a funny story, funny and <laughs> not funny. So when we had our call, we had a lot of things we needed to talk about. Yes. We had a lot of stuff. Uh, it was an important call for us. So I, what, what I, what I needed to share with Andres was my own boundary saying, Hey, I have a doctor's appointment today and it's 40 minutes away. If I don't leave at this time, I'm not going to make it. Right. So I didn't do that because <laughs> I didn't establish my own boundaries and I need to get better with that. I was really like, we need to get this worked out. And I made that more important than getting to my doctor's appointment. Well, the funny mm. part is that I was 40 minutes away. I got mm. to the doctors 20 late. minutes late oh, and they couldn't geez. take me. They could not. No. They couldn't take me. So I got back in the car and I headed back and I wasted all that time. And in the car ride, I kept thinking about you can accommodate and you can be um, what, what, what I need to take responsibility for is what Andressa was just talking about. When you're in this path of balancing, you have to put your boundaries up and express them. And my knee jerk is just to please and to be, I don't know, not to please, or I didn't want to, I didn't want to like cut the conversation short. I felt bad. And, and what that led me to do is miss my doctor's appointment and literally mm -hmm. waste an hour and a half in the car. And I didn't waste the time. I you know made some phone calls, mm -hmm. what have you called on justice. She didn't call me back. But yeah. my, my point saying that is I just, I love that you said boundaries because that's the second half of that story is that when you express what pe you need for, to people, you can accommodate and, and, and shift, but you also then need on the other end of it, honor. know your own honor, your own boundaries and be able to express those and not feel bad about it because it's going to be, re it's a, you know, it's a repercussion. And I got all annoyed at the woman. I'm like, you cannot take me. Mm -hmm. Like it was her fault. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that if you so share with share. me, which links to the next point that there I want to make is the accountability, right? If you had started that, that call saying, Hey, just a heads up. I have a hard stop at. Correct. So, 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 because I have a doctor's appointment, no matter what, we will be stopping that We'd call. Stop. That's correct. <laughs> We will have to stop. So accountability, it's something that um, not all people are ready to be held accountable. Okay. And they, yeah. that, that's a fact. For many years of my life, I did not want to be held accountable. I wanted to do, I held myself accountable. And that is like a really like inside the box and like my own bubble. Uh, but when you're looking to to grow, to expand yourself and live life on your own terms, I don't know if I could have achieved what I achieved in my life so far without having that accountability for, for people around me. I, I don't think so. And, and and people hold me accountable. Not They're not like checking if I've done it or not. It's beyond that. It's like my way of being. The mentors that I have right now, both lists separate together, they hold us accountable for, okay, you are expanding as a leader. You're you're managing a larger yeah. group of people right now. How, do, how does that look like? How does that affect your, your balance? Let's communicate it to everybody, what is it and what it's not. So it's it, if we don't share, if we don't have this core people to hold us accountable, I don't think I would really work on balance. It will be totally off the chart because mm -hmm. if I commit to Liz, I will not cancel on her. But if I commit to myself many times, right? And I think that that's what exactly Liz said. We are so passionate about this community that we will cancel ourselves, delay ourselves the appointments that we have with ourselves are going to be secondary and we will put other people in place. And that's when accountability comes. Because if I say it to Liz, she will hang up on me. She will like, Tup. if I had a doctor's appointment, I know she will hold me accountable and say, okay, you got to go. Bye. Yeah. And I will hold her accountable. But I think that the, the, the recurring, right? The recurring and say, okay, now I am aware that this happened. That didn't work. Right, Liz getting getting uh, uh, late to the appointment that didn't work. So from a leadership perspective, my next step here is always say, okay, all our calls and our executive assistant is in charge of starting on time and ending on time every single yeah. um, meeting that we have. So that's something that we can 
put in place. So I encourage you to also observe what is happening. So the thinking list, awareness, set the boundaries in accountability. That's what we have been working on and is working progress as you, as you guys can, can, can tell, right? As we grow our business, we're going to have different types of challenges and it's going to become a, we're going to be rookies in that area all over again. It's a working progress, but without having the commitment to work on it and live life by design, I don't think that if we're just, uh, you know, going with the flow, I always say, those who go with the flow are dead fish. We're not dead fish. <laughs> <laughs> so that's all I have for, for today, ladies. Um, create what works for you. What balance looks like to you might be different to me. And that's totally fine. Yeah. And and, and the key here with our mini-sodes and our, our full-length episodes is to take one thing, one thing you got, put it into action, put it in our Facebook community, what you did how, what showed up for you, tag us. We love hearing the impact we're making in each of your lives. And, uh, and know what better way to do that than to share what's working for you and what tip you took into your own life. So thank you for being here. Thank you. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to receive updates on our next interviews, go to our website, therealestateinvestor.com. There you can subscribe to our show, become part of our investor community and get updates on upcoming episodes. If you like our show, please share it with other women who would benefit. And don't forget to leave us a rating on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And as always, we encourage you to take one action as a result of today's show and put it into motion so you can live both a financially free and balanced life. Thanks for spending time with us. Ciao.